Okay, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jackie. I am a uh, current Region 2 Section Coordinator. Um, this will be my second year. I was inducted um, into the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee chapter back in 2019. Um, and yeah, this is my second year. The Section Coordinator was in uh, Region 5 last year, so they still have a special place in my heart. Um, but happy to be presenting this morning. And hi, I'm Trish Maxwell. I'm with the National Office. Um, I'm the Director of Collegiate Success. Um, so I'm here to help all of our chapters um, and be strong and with whatever you need. So today we're going to hit a lot of things in a short period of time. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what to focus on for the fall semester, then the spring semester. Jackie's going to talk about how section coordinators can help. I'll talk about how national office can help. And then we'll have some dialogue if there's time and kind of answer any questions that you have. But, you know, this session is really kind of geared for those of you that may have just selected a group or maybe you don't really know what's going on or the you know pandemic hit a little harder than you wish it would have and you're trying to get your chapter jump started again so we're here to help and we want to kind of share those ways to do it okay um so i kind of want to begin this slide with just mentioning that like all of these things the earlier that you can start the better um, so really even right after conference would be a good idea to start um, kind of like getting your um, executive board together and start thinking about these as a group. I came from a very struggling chapter when I um, came in, we had $12 left in our bank account. So uh, with goal setting and priority setting, you kind of really need to look at your chapter. So maybe it is selection you need to focus on, or maybe it's having an idea that we really need to be fundraising to hit that $350, you know, conference fee by the end of the year. So really keeping those things in mind, like where, where your chapter might be lacking um, and considering the fall selection to increase membership. Uh, if you still need to elect officers, you definitely want to do that. So that way you can divide tasks. So not just the president is stuck doing all of the heavy lifting. Finding an advisor, uh, plan for chapter visibility. So what kind of new ideas can you bring to sort of uh, bring the spotlight on, on mortar board on your campus. And then some dates to consider uh, the chapter action plan, which is due September 30th and October 15th for quarter schools. So this is sort of the document that lays out all of these goals tentatively when you wanna plan events, um, host fundraisers, service projects, all of that. So again, starting as early as you can to really map things out and get a good head start is highly recommended. Um, and then just to put these things on your calendar, the fall national virtual initiation, which happens November 5th. So this is a great thing if you do do a fall selection, uh, national office will kind of take this off of your plate uh, so you can induct your, your new members on November 5th with, with the national team. And then the special national conference on January 28th. So putting that on your calendar so you can really plan around, um, you do need a delegate there. You'll hear probably multiple times this weekend that the um, the year goes quickly and plan for the year to go quickly. And I don't think we can emphasize that enough. And I think you start and you're like, yeah, sure. Okay, the year goes quickly. And then you hit April and you're like, wow, the year went quickly. Um, so we're going to just kind of give you a little bit of thought about spring. So spring, um, one of the primary things you'll work on is selecting that new class, um, recruiting and selecting them and um, we're here to help with all of that too. You'll also want to work on increasing chapter visibility um, so people know what mortar board is on campus and you know getting mortar board's name out there. One great way to do that is by holding public tappings. Um, I know during the pandemic, um, you know, obviously you couldn't do public tapping, and you know, some schools are still working on getting back to public tapping. Um, but really, you know, and if you're not familiar with tapping or if you weren't tapped in a public way, that's you know. Some schools go into other, uh, go into classrooms or meetings and they tap the members and they read a little bio about them and why they're being uh, selected for mortar board. Um, some groups do it in you know, large groups and move about campus. Like I know Nebraska Lincoln, they all put on um, graduation gowns and then they go kind of room to room and tap everybody. Um, some schools do videos, but they do like really personalized videos. So like, this is why we've tapped Gail. She's amazing. And that, not only do they send it to her, but 
they post it on their social media. So there's a lot of different ways. We're happy to give you ideas for that. But the more public you can do the tapping, the better. Um, Hanover College just did their tapping um, at, and they tapped the university president at a university event. So that is like the ultimate <laughs> um, chapter visibility, right? Um, so in, in the initiation ceremony, you know, we do have virtual initiations if you can't seem to pull it off or, you know, would rather have a virtual option. Um, but an, an on-campus ceremony is also a great way to get mortarboard out there and, and to show others what mortarboard is. Um, and then electing and transitioning your new officers. So um, with that new class, selecting, you know, who comes next and who do you pass the torch to? Um, other dates to consider, Jackie mentioned the Special Na National Conference, which is a great way to get jump started for the spring, um, January 28th. Uh, we'll have those national virtual initiations. We do two, um, one in April and one in May for our different schools that are on semester or quarter systems. Um, and then we have Mortarboard Week. So Mortarboard's birthday is February 15th. Um, so the week surrounding Mortarboard, um, there's a lot of programming. There'll be a bunch of national programming, but you see a lot of chapters do programming and service projects as well. And then uh, just to keep in mind that we wrap up the end of the year with the chapter annual report, um, which also includes award nominations, and that's due May 15th. Um, so, you know, sharing what you've done um, over the year, which is also a helpful planning tool for those coming in. If you're an incoming officer, we'll send you last year's report so that you have that to start uh, planning and, and getting what you need to. Um, and then applying for awards because our chapters are doing really great things. And, you know, we have a whole wide variety of awards from most improved chapter to, you know, kind of the pinnacle Ruth Weimer Mount chapter excellence and everything in between. We have excellence in certain areas, like different projects. Um, and we have um, different um, outstanding achievements. So maybe you are great at chapter visibility. We'll highlight that. Maybe you're great at recruitment and selection. We'll highlight that. Great question, Alexis. When do we get last year's reports? Um, we'll send them in August to the new group. Um, we're still working on getting all of the um, all of the reports in. And yes, the special national conference is also virtual. I should have mentioned that. Okay, so how section coordinators can help? I would say the common theme is just support and kind of a resource. So we are your direct connection to the national office. Um, and then also just a great place to, to be a sounding board. So providing support, I would say, and with past chapters that I've personally worked with, um, you know, we can be present during maybe your chapter meetings or executive board meetings to, you know, just kind of be there to answer questions that come up that you might not know or kind of help guide through some of these meetings. Um, following up with advisors or the national office, like if you don't have a great working relationship with your advisor, we can be there to sort of um, put the national office uh, title behind it. And that sometimes can get answers from your advisors and things too. So if you need answers or help, you know, renting rooms on campus, that sort of stuff. Um, and then also to keep you on track. So, you know, we will be sending you reminders saying like, hey, just want to check in, make sure, you know, you don't need anything from us. Or if there's a report coming up that we've seen that you haven't submitted, you know, making sure we can support you to get all of these things turned in on time. Um, and again, to make sure you know that you're not alone. I know that it can be very overwhelming, especially if you don't have a super engaged chapter uh, to kind of help support you. Um, again, be a resource. So we've seen other chapters with their um, you know, events, fundraisers, advisor appreciation, the list goes on. We also can tap into our other section coordinators as well. So if there's a question that we can't answer, you know, we'd all put out questions and everybody's very willing to help and provide their experience. And they might've seen something that we haven't. Um, and then act as a sounding board. So for Mortarboard and beyond, I know that it can be lonely. And again, I, I speak from a place of like knowing how uh, much responsibility it was to take on and kind of being the only one who really knew the spirit of Mortarboard with a smaller chapter. So maybe you have an issue you need to work through or you're feeling very overwhelmed. We can. Uh, be both professional and personal if you so need it. Um, talk things through, resolve conflicts, um, and and provide ideas and, and things like that. So really kind of whatever you need, and especially if it's a link to the national office. I will say with the resource, we can also, if your chapter is financially struggling, to really make sure that we can 
hook you up. There's some great kind of grants and things too. So we can hopefully take that off your plate. So. A great point, Jackie. So one of the grants that's offered, it will, you know, can help cover the cost of the conference. So if you're here and you're thinking, oh my gosh, my chapter didn't pay that um, $350 conference chapter annual fee, um, let us know. There is a grant program that we can help. We've had some really great, generous alumni that have donated to help cover some of the costs of the chapters. So if that is a financial hardship for your chapter, just let us know and um, you can Slack me, email me, you know, hit up Jackie and we'll get you that link so that we, so that you can, um, so that you, you're not in a bad spot <laughs> as a chapter. Um, okay, so how the national office can help. So I started with Mortarboard about five months ago. Um, and the first conversation that I had with Kirsten, the executive director, is how can we get, how can we help these chapters, students, have so much on their plates, advisors have so much on their plates, what can we do from a national office perspective to take some of the pressure off? Now, some chapters might wanna do all of their own things and that's fine and that's great, but we wanted to create resources for chapters that can't or don't, or you know, don't have the capacity. You know, I think life happens sometimes and sometimes you sign up to be president and it's great. And then maybe you're struggling with your mental health or maybe, you know, you, you overcommitted yourself and you're in too many things and you're like, wow, this is just a lot and I can't take it all on. Um, I want you to know we're here to help. That's why we're here. Um, that's why Mortar Board pays me a salary <laughs> is to help you. So any way we can help, let me know. Um, so one of the ways we have a national application. So if you, if you get an eligibility list on campus um, and you wanna send out your you know, send out information about mortar board and kind of get applications for new members. Sometimes collecting all those applications can be a lot. Um, so we're happy to collect them for you. We just ask, you know, what deadline are you going with? Um, and you say April 1st and I say, great. So then on April 2nd, I send you all of your applications in a spreadsheet. And then you go from there and tell us, you know, what candidates you select. Um, we also have national volunteers that are happy to help with selecting and tapping if you need to. Um, like I know Jackie, you helped um, some chapters with their selection piece. So if you're really not sure, you're like, well, I don't really know how to select or what we're selecting or what we're doing. We're happy to have national volunteers help with that process. It still should be student governed and student selected, but we're happy to kind of sit in and, and assist with those pieces. Um, we talked about the national virtual initiations. Um, we have those, again, to help take the pressure off. Um, they're facilitated by the national president, and we have a lot of national leaders that you see on the conference there. Um, so it's really kind of a cool and prestigious thing. We've also seen a lot of chapters have their in-person um, initiation, but then for the people that couldn't come, they offer them to go to the national virtual initiation, which I think is a cool way to kind of balance that out. Um, we have assistance with officer elections and transitions. So for a few chapters right now, I'm working on them, uh, working with them to find their new officer. So I've sent an email saying, hey, who's interested in an officer position? Let us know and then we'll work um, to kind of help get those positions. Or maybe you're the, you know, you were elected or selected to be the president and you're like, wow, it's just me. I don't have an executive board. We're happy to help you um, get some more help with your peers as well. Um, Jackie mentioned sometimes you might not have an advisor. Um, we can help find that. We know, you know, we have a great alumni connection. Um, you know, we're willing to kind of call people on campus to help find an advisor, some different offices. Um, a lot of times we ask the students, like, do you have any suggestions? first because um, you know your campus best, but we're happy to kind of help facilitate some of those conversations for you. And then one cool thing that I'm pretty excited about is we're going to have some pre-made marketing materials for chapters to use. Um, it's coming soon. Been a little focused on the conference, but after the conference, we'll work on getting some of those marketing materials so that if you say, okay, we've gotten permission to hang flyers on campus, I don't have a flyer, you'll have a flyer that you can print, um, you know, some general kind of mortar board social media posts that you can kick out if you have a social account or attached to emails and things like that. If you have any ideas for what might be a helpful um, marketing material for your chapter to have, let me know, I'm happy to make it up. Um, but yeah, so again, the more we can help, if you have ideas for better ways we can help, hey, it would be really great if you could take this off our plate let us know a lot of these initiatives came from those type of conversations. So 
So I want to spend the last five-ish minutes um, hearing from you. Um, and, you know, we're just going to kind of, we're going to let you drop it in chat. Um, but, you know, talk to us. Tell us, you know, what do you feel you need to be successful? I know you've probably been in your office for a month or less. Um, so maybe you don't quite know yet, but, you know, guess. What do you think you might need? What concerns do you have? Um, what questions do you have? You know, just feel free to drop them in chat and Jack, you know, kind of read them and um, respond to them as we see them. And Wilson, since you're sitting in here, Wilson's been an SC um, with Region 2 for a while. He's an amazing SC. He's becoming a new alumni rep. So Wilson, if you want to field any of these questions too, feel free. I'll try, but I think uh, there is another session, maybe uh, trying to advertise that the session is this afternoon that we will have uh, more of a discussion from advisor and SC perspective to kind of leveraging best practices. So uh, I will encourage for those that are interested to join us, uh, join our session at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, it will be a similar content, but it will be a little bit different perspective because it was speaking from an advisor and SC perspective. So thanks, Wilson. Yeah, Thank and you. to talk about some of those other chapter operation sessions. So the next rotation is um, about programming. So social program, campus partnerships, uh, finances and fundraising and service projects. So that's a great place to get resources and ideas. And then like Wilson said, the, the third round is kind of chapter enhancement. So looking at member engagement, because I know some, some people said we're really busy. Um, Isabella, you know, what are some ways to hold engagement? Check out that session. Um, and then the other session, um, oh, it's slipping my mind. Hold on one second. Um, the other session that, oh, chapter visibility, I'm presenting that one. <laughs> so how to get more divorce name. Um, out on campus. Um, There's some really great questions in the chat. I don't know that you'll have time to get to all of them, Trish, but there are some, yeah. um, clearly everybody's kind of having some okay. similar frustrations and concerns. Yeah, I'm seeing this. So what we'll do, um, what Jackie and I will do is we'll save the chat. We'll actually add the questions to the end of the slide deck, and then we'll make the slide deck available so that you have them. But just to hit a few more questions, um, here, you know, a lot of people saying like, I don't have a whole lot of info from last year's um, last year's group, you know, help. Um, we'll work on that in August, again, getting you those um, chapter annual reports. We'll forward any information that we have. Um, we have a bunch of chapter histories that we can send to you as well. Um, so those will be headed your way. Um, again, having a hard time getting people to events, check out that member engagement session. Um, there's two SCs, one that is from a really amazing chapter that is great at um, chapter engagement and um, an SC that has worked with, with a lot of recovering chapters. So it's kind of a twofold um, piece that you'll see there. And just to some of the chapters in the chat talking about um, kind of like uh, being engaged in events as a way to have like regalia at the end. Um, we did something similar for my chapter. Um, we did a point system. So you can kind of assign that. So maybe like just a meeting would be like, I don't know, one point, but attending a service event is three and you have to get a certain amount um, by the end. And then the chapter will cover your regalia. So um, there are discounts for bulk orders, but you probably want to just kind of get a gauge for how many members you have. So when you're planning fundraising, you know, it's the 350 plus whatever you might need to pay for regalia. So just kind of budget that in at the beginning of the year so you know what your target fundraising goal um, should be. And then, of course, if you're going to fall short, that's where we're here to help and, and you know, do whatever we can to to, to get funding or, or provide you some other options too to make sure you can cover those costs. Great, Jackie. Um, if I could add an idea. Yes, please. Um, I think one of the ways to get people to come to meetings is to make the meetings um, engaging or useful to them. So perhaps at the beginning of the year, coming up with maybe there's a theme that everybody wants to have at the meetings, or maybe everybody needs help with resume building, or they want to hear 
speakers about certain careers or or more mentorship but I think coming up in the beginning with a plan and every meeting is going to maybe have something that benefits them in some way um, not just so socially but but in other realms that they're interested in might help get them engaged and attending. That's a great point coming from uh, section coordinator of the year 2022 Catherine Gabrielson. Thanks Catherine that's exactly what I was going to say or along that lines, but completely forgot. So I'm glad you said it. Um, thank you. Another great point from Wilson. Um, a lot of your colleges and universities have different funds or grants for registered student organizations. So be sure to check that out, especially um, for different programming or even attending the conference. I've seen, um, because next year it will be in person, I've seen some schools get travel funds that way too. That's great. Um, and kind of piggybacking off of what Catherine said before we kind of close out, in addition to you know getting members more involved in meetings, like ask them what the best time to meet is. Um, I think we don't always think about doing that, but do a poll, like what's the best time to meet? Um, I've seen a lot of chapters offer both virtual and hybrid meetings. So maybe one month it's virtual, the next month it's um, it's in person, or you just kind of zoom people into all the meetings. Um, again, the, the more you can make it accessible, the better. We'll take one more question. Do you know how much the conference will cost next year? Um, so the conference, it's so it's the conference chapter fee. It's always three hundred fifty dollars. That's the set fee, um, and so that's how much it'll be next year. And we'll release more information about travel and stuff once we know and have finalized the location. Okay, as I said, we'll check out all of these questions. I'm sorry if we missed your question. Um, we'll be sure to get to it. Um, the next session, um, I'm gonna put a little slide up here. Um, the next rotation um, are the programming sessions. Um, so finances and fundraising, in room one, servant leadership, community service in room two, and then stay here for campus event, uh, social events and campus partnerships. Um, so thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time and um, we'll post the reporting and we'll also share the slide deck. Thank you. And thank you. for those who are staying in this room, I had one more um, tidbit, which is if you wanna have what we call kind of a retreat in the before school starts, and just meet somewhere on campus or near campus, make it fun and really uh, map out your year and really get that input of what they want the year to look like and really keeping in mind this kind of values of membership. Uh, you know, what are the, where, where do they wanna go and, and how do they want to be, how, how they want it to look right at the beginning so everybody's on the same page and and really get them involved early on. Great point, Catherine. Thank you.